Back in 2015, the Golden State Warriors erupted on the NBA scene with a revolutionary style of basketball that changed the game as we know it forever. The transcendent style of play led by Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, and Steph Curry was not only a game changer, but was so dominant that it led to a level of success that, quite frankly, I don't believe I will ever see again in my lifetime. Six trips to the NBA Finals, five of which were consecutive, winning four championships, and within an eight-year span when Curry, Klay, and Dre were all healthy and available, not only did the Warriors have a win percentage that was north of 76% in the regular season, peaking in 2016 when they iconically won 73 games, but also in that same time frame, they only lost one series in the playoffs. Now fast forward to where we are today and the Warriors are far removed from their heyday. As I record this video, Golden State has a record of 18 and 22, an offense that is slightly above average with a defense hovering bottom five territory. And what makes all of that even more intriguing is that in many of these games, the Warriors are actually competitive Heck, some of the games they actually have significant leads and they still end up finding ways on how to lose. As the Warriors have accrued four losses because they blew 18 point leads. What's worse is that the Warriors biggest struggles are things that they can control, such as turning over the ball 15 times a game or fouling at a rate that sends their opponent to the free throw line 25 times. But what is possibly the biggest concern for Golden State is the problems that we see with their core three. Klay Thompson has been the definition of inconsistency. Draymond, when available, is actually having a resurgence offensively while still being one of the best defensive players in the NBA, but when available is the key phrase in that statement because unfortunately due to Dre not being able to keep his hands to himself, he's only been available for 16 games so far this season. And then we have Steph, who for the most part still looks really, really good. But of course, Curry is human. So at the age of 35 with an increased workload, we can already start to see how the burden can be too much for him. Sprinkle in frustrations from Kaminga and Moody with their inconsistent minutes and role on a game to game basis, injuries from Chris Paul and Gary Payton, and a mysterious decline from Andrew Wiggins. These are all signs that will lead anyone to believe that this team really isn't that good. But also, and what's possibly even more frightening, is that these are the preliminary stages of one of the most dominant dynasties coming to a close. You can easily see not only how underwhelming this year will be for the Golden State Warriors, but more importantly, instead of an organization adding a few more years to the run, instead what the Warriors have provided us is a front row seat to a dying dynasty. So how exactly did we get here? Well, first, let's just look at the roster and acknowledge that this is easily one of the least talented teams the Warriors have rolled out in years, which is crazy to believe because in the beginning of the dynasty, the Warriors had one of the most complete rosters in the NBA. Now, to be fair to the Warriors in the front office, there's been a lot of things that have been completely out of their control such as injuries, retirement, and players just miraculously looking significantly worse from one year to the next, such as Klay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins. So far this season, the two wing players have been completely underwhelming, with Klay Thompson arguably having the worst season of his career since his rookie campaign, as he averages only 17 points, with shooting splits across the board that are near career lows, in particular, shooting only 38.6% with a long ball, which is really close to the lowest mark of the iconic sharpshooter's career. Now compare this to what we just witnessed from Klay Thompson last season, and we can see a noticeable difference in production across the board. Now, to be fair to Klay, we can easily point to the injuries that he sustained a few years back as career altering, and this unfortunately just has to be the new version of Klay that we have to accept moving forward throughout his career. But when it comes to Andrew Wiggins, honestly, I don't know where the turning point is. The 28-year-old who should be comfortably living in his prime is undeniably having the worst season of his career. Being held to 12 points per game, shooting 42% from the field, sub 30% with a long ball, while also also only shooting 68% from the charity strike. Marriage that with a sharp decline defensively, and we find ourselves talking about a player who just two years ago was arguably the second best player on a championship caliber team, now is virtually unplayable. And the numbers back this up as well. When Wiggins is on the floor, the Warriors have a net rating of minus 9.1. However, when he's off the floor, the Warriors have a net rating of 5.5. And for those who are confused about on-off numbers and net ratings, this essentially means when Wiggins is on the floor, the Warriors are losing by nine points, but when he's off the floor, they're winning those minutes by five to six points which is pretty staggering to say the least. So having Clay and Wiggins play at this level was certainly not expected. But even with that being the reality, easily the biggest contributing factor to the sharp regression of talent on this team has to be Draymond Green. 
Now on a micro level so far this season, Draymond having these mental lapses of him being an MMA fighter and striking people across the face has led him to be suspended. And within those games that he missed after hitting Yusuf Nurkic, the Warriors were abysmal defensively. As the Golden State Warriors defensive rating nearly ballooned to 124, making them only second to the Detroit Pistons for the worst defense in the NBA within that 16 game stretch. Now let's pause for a second and really digest what I just told you. When Draymond Green was not available to play, the Golden State Warriors defense was so bad that it was comparable to a team that was on a historic losing streak. Let that settle in. Not only does that show you how valuable Draymond is, but also it does give you another perspective on how bad the talent is on his roster because the Warriors have never been that dependent on Draymond's excellence on the defensive side of the floor. But on a macro level, the Golden State Warriors abruptly losing Kevin Durant and Jordan Poole is something that they have just not been able to recover from. And as we all know, Draymond Green played a heavy hand in those two no longer being a warrior. As KD has been on record stating that the tension between him and Green played a role in him deciding to go to Brooklyn, and of course we all saw the punch heard around the NBA world when Draymond laid hands on his own teammate in Jordan Poole. The result of those two not being on the team as well as the Warriors not being able to find adequate offensive replacements essentially meant that Steph Curry had to pick up a larger offensive load, and that load became even bigger with the regression of Clay and Wiggins this season. And for the most part, I have to get props to the 35 year old future hall of famer and curry because so far this season i think he's been handling all of that pretty well but in the past 10 games we have seen a little bit of shakiness from curry as he's only been averaging 22 and a half points six assists three rebounds and shooting sub 40 percent from the field below 33 percent from behind the arc and it is very clear that his impact on the game just isn't the same then from a team perspective with curry being the only true shot creator for the warriors at times their offense can be very mundane routine and heavily jump shot dependent which has resulted in only 17% of the Warriors shots this year being within 0-3 to three feet of the basket, which is dead last in the NBA, and it's something that Jordan Poole undeniably would have been able to aid them with, with his athleticism and ball handling ability. Now for those who don't believe that this is a real regression from Curry, rather than just a shooting slump, I don't mind subscribing to that ideology. However, it still does not address the much bigger picture, and that is, a 35 year old should not have this amount of offensive responsibility, and the front office in Golden State knew this as well which is why they were attempting to position themselves for the inevitable but unfortunately this is now their new reality due to Draymond burning so many different bridges now of course when a roster is lacking some talent the immediate answer would be trades but unfortunately for the Golden State Warriors it's much more complicated than that because they are in financial hell as we just established this is a roster that really isn't that talented and yet the Warriors have spent north of 208 million dollars for this roster giving them the highest payroll in the NBA. And the contract situation for some of these players makes things even more convoluted. Andrew Wiggins, who is playing the worst basketball of his career, is in year one of his four-year $109 million contract extension. So of course, no one in their right mind would want to pay Wiggins $25 to $30 million for the next three to four years if he's playing this poorly. Chris Paul, who's roughly making $30 million this year, would be a really good option, especially because on the following season, his contract is not fully guaranteed, which means that a potential suitor would more than likely view him as cap relief in the upcoming year but unfortunately a he's hurt b he's not playing good enough for a team to receive him just because he's cap relief meaning that the Warriors will more than likely have to pair him with more assets to make the trade a bit more appealing for the potential suitor and c and more importantly because he's making so much money whoever the player the Warriors receive in return golden state would have to be comfortable paying them the amount of money that they are owed in the next upcoming years and then we have the elephant in the room and that is clay thompson in his contract situation is thompson is on an expiring contract making 43 million dollars this year and and he still has not signed a contract extension, which now puts the organization in a very tough decision. If they decide to move on from Clay, they would effectively be making the first step to dismantling the dynasty. But if they decide to keep him and give him a contract extension in the offseason, that basically financially handcuffs the Golden State Warriors to the roster as is. So if the Warriors ignore the elephant in the room, which is Clay Thompson's contract extension, and they also don't want to trade for a big name with a big contract because of the financial implications that come behind that, then they're really only left with one other option, which is pair Chris Paul with some of the younger players and Jonathan Kaminga and or Moses Moody and go after complimentary role players who are on manageable contracts. However, 
If the Golden State Warriors decide to trade their young players for role players, then it will reveal the biggest mistake that they've ever made, which was drafting them in the first place. See, a lot of things that I talked about in today's video are problems that many people have tried to highlight in the community about the Warriors. And though these problems are valid, quite frankly, they were not only expected, but also very manageable. Losing Kevin Durant and Jordan Poole to the Golden State Warriors was very hard hitting, but the Warriors have already proven that they can win without KD before and after he was on the roster. And though Jordan Poole was a pivotal piece to the 2022 championship run, you could clearly see that he's not going to be able to live up to the expectations of that max contract the Warriors gave him. The sharp regression of Klay Thompson was seen a mile away once he sustained career altering injuries. And if we are potentially seeing a slow decline from Steph Curry, well, duh, he's 35 years old. The only thing that's really taking anybody by surprise is Andrew Wiggins, because honestly, I have no idea what's wrong with him. But outside of the Wiggins conundrum, everything that's happening in Golden State right now was expected and manageable and the front office even had all the tools to their disposal to avoid this mess entirely and they made the wrong decision. After the finals lost in 2019, the Golden State Warriors saw a lot of change to their roster. Kevin Durant left, Klay Thompson missed two seasons due to injuries, even Steph Curry practically missed an entire year himself as well. And when the Warriors were missing that much talent, they did a lot of losing but also did a lot of asset managing at the same time. And within a short window of time, the Warriors accumulated four first rounders, three of which were lottery selections, and one of them was a second overall pick. And with that much draft capital, the front office had a decision to make. Do we A, trade these draft picks for solidified veteran talent that can maximize every single year that we have left of our core three? Or B, do we attempt to extend our window of success by drafting young players, allowing them to mature and grow under the tutelage of Curry, Clay, and Dre? And when it's time for those three to step away, Golden State can gracefully move into a new era of Warriors basketball. And unfortunately, the Warriors chose the latter, and the young players really have not been able to live up to expectations whatsoever. Now, please do not misunderstand not living up to expectations, meaning that a player is bad, because that is not true at all. The three lottery picks that are in question turned out to be James Wiseman, Moses Moody, and Jonathan Kaminga. Two of those three players show a lot of promise in Kaminga and Moody, but unfortunately for the Warriors, they need production, not projects. And Kaminga, Moody, and certainly James Wiseman have not been able to turn the learning curve quick enough to aid Curry, Clay, and Dre as they continue to try to compete for championships. And sorry to Warrior fans, even though yes, I am a fan of Kaminga myself, he certainly isn't good enough to weather the storm beyond the years of Stephen Curry. And the front office is aware of this as well. It's the reason why Wiseman is no longer on the team, and it's the reason why a roster that is desperately seeking talent is willing to leverage what little assets they have left to try to bring in some solidified production to this team, even if it means means giving up on Kaminga and Moody. But I have to ask, if you're going to trade all of the young players that you drafted, what was the purpose of drafting them in the first place? Because now that people have seen what these players have looked like, the return that the Warriors are going to receive is certainly going to be significantly less than what they would have received three or four years ago when they were just draft picks. And again, we've already seen that with Wiseman when the Warriors essentially only received Gary Payton the second back for trading James Wiseman, who was a second over raw pick. Yes, Kaminga and Moody will give them a better haul, but nothing, and I do believe absolutely nothing that will even come close to what the Warriors could have received three or four years ago, and certainly not enough to prevent the dynasty from collapsing on itself. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Please let me know what you think about the video in the comment section below. I definitely want to hear your thoughts on the Golden State Warriors and where they went wrong over the years that led up to this situation now. Also, if you want to hear more content from me, I have a second channel where I react to NBA takes. I have another channel where I react to NBA news, and I also stream almost daily on another platform called playback.tv where I'm watching NBA games live. All of the links will be in the description, but if not, as always, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Peace.